Uh, so hi everyone. Today we will be discussing how we can detect trend in a time series uh, using a mathematical test called as man candle test. Later on we will also see how man candle test can be implemented in Python. Uh, there is a library present for this, and eventually, given a time series, it detects whether a trend is present or not. So let's get started with the mathematics first. So uh, similar to hypothesis testing, man candle test also assumes a null hypothesis and a alternate hypothesis initially the null hypothesis states that there is no trend present in the time series right so there is no trend present in time series and the alternate hypothesis states that there is a trend present in the uh, in the time series now eventually if we are able to reject the null hypothesis using the man candle test eventually we would be saying that a monotonic trend is present and this is the entire aim of the test key if we are able to uh, reject this null hypothesis or not now, so what are the steps involved? Assume that we are assuming this uh, small time series for our, uh, for our sample case, uh, where we have got uh, nearly eight samples, and we are trying to detect whether a trend is present or not in this particular data set. First of all, we need to uh, rearrange the entire data set depending upon the dates uh, where uh, once we have been able to arrange them in a certain order. The second thing that we are going to calculate is the summation of a function called as sine. Uh, sine xj minus sk now what is this uh, let's understand that so the uh, so a function sine xj minus xk is equals to 1 when xj minus xk is greater than 0 now what is j and what is k so uh, given a time series uh, any index j would always be greater than any index k so for example if we are uh, standing at the third one that is uh, uh, first of may 2022 that is value 6 if j equals to 3 because of the third instance in the data set so k can be possibly either 1 that is 2 or 2 that is 4 so uh, at any point of time uh, the k would take values that are behind that particular timestamp so if we assume uh, here the 8 on 1st of august then all the timestamps behind this can form our k so k equals to 1 k equals to 2 k equals to 3 k equals to 4 k equals to 5 and j equals to 6 so uh, in any point of time when sine xj minus xk uh, is greater than 0 then the value of this function is equals to 1 else the value of the function is minus 1 if the value is less than 0 or if it is equal to 0 then we take it as 0 only so sine function can take three values that is 1 minus 1 and 0 depending upon the values of the difference between the xj minus xk and we have already determined what is j and k now what is the next part that we will be doing is the summation of all the sine functions that we have calculated so uh, how are you going to do the summation so uh, starting from this point the second instance the first would be uh, 4 minus 2 uh, plus 6 minus 2 uh, 6 minus 4 the next uh, next instance would be uh, looking here when j equals to 2 uh, then 4 minus 2 because k equals to 1 when j equals to 3 then we will be producing two terms because k equals to 1 k equals to 2 so if you look back, uh, so k equals to 1 equals to 2 and k equals to 2 equals to 4. Uh, 6 minus 2, 6 minus 4, when j equals to 4, then 6 minus 2, 6 minus 4, 6 minus 6. So when you are here, so we are considering all the three positions and likewise. Uh, for all these terms, we will be calculating the sine functions and eventually summating them. Uh, as you can see, uh, the values that would be taken would be uh, 1, uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 because 8 minus is equal to 0 and when once we would be uh, summating all these values we will be getting a value 17 you can try it at home now the next term that we will be calculating is a variance now variance has a bit uh, tricky formula that is 1 upon 18 and n minus 1 2 n plus 5 now n is equals to the number of samples in the data set minus summation over a t e uh, t e minus 1 2 te plus 5 now uh, we need to understand what is a and what is te here like other statements are like other elements use are pretty easy to understand now a is the count of total tied groups present in the time series and t is the particular value for the tied group so we will understand what does this mean so a tied group uh, a equals to those groups like those values uh, like which are repeated in the time series so for example if you look here in a particular time series, we can see that 6 has been repeated thrice and 8 has been repeated twice so we have two tied groups present here that is uh, represented by 6 and that is represented by 8 now eventually the value te in the formula equals the total frequency of these repeated terms in the particular group so 
six has been repeated thrice so te takes a value three and uh, eight has been repeated twice so te takes a value two so i guess now the formula becomes very clear we will start putting in the values uh, so you can see that uh, once we are summation summating this value we are producing two terms because as i told you uh, we have got two tight groups uh, one has a value three and one has a value two three represents the tight group is represented by six and this particular group is represented by two eventually we will put on the value so we will get the variance equals to 39.27 using the formula and placing in the values correct values now the last part of the formula is like uh, we need to follow this one sin uh, sum, uh, sin underscore summation minus one upon under root of variance if sin summation is greater than zero so if you remember i sin summation was 17 so we will be following the first formula uh, eventually the value goes mk stat the final value that we are calculating is the mk stat using this particular formula uh, we get 17 minus one upon under root of 39.25 27 equals to 2.55 now please you remember uh, how we do we used to do hypothesis testing so we are assuming a significance percentage that is 0 0.05 for which the mk stat has to be greater than 1.96 to reject the null hypothesis as you can see that we have a null hypothesis 2.55 uh, eventually the null hypothesis gets rejected and as uh, like the value is positive the, we have an upward trend in the data set. Else, if the value would have been minus 2.55, then we would have a, a downward trend. Uh, now, is the last part of the entire uh, vlog that is how we can implement the same in Python. So, we have a package called as PyMan Candle, uh, which implements this M, uh, MK test, uh, the PyMan Candle, the Man Candle test uh, internally, uh, which can be used as shown in the given code mk.original test, the given series and the alpha value. So alpha value can be set equals 0 0.05, 0 0.01 depending upon uh, the confidence you wish to have in your results.